Hi everybody. Uh, Hello. <laughs> <laughs> we're back on the channel. Uh, today we have Kevin Joe here. We're currently in Dubai. Uh, so Kevin is an entrepreneur from Canada, moved to Panama, now in Dubai for a while. Uh, he's built a software business um, in the SEO space, um, scaled that and then exited that. And then now he's um, chilling, I guess. Yeah, taking some time <laughs> off. <yeah. laughs> taking some time off and stuff. So thank you, Kevin, for your time. Yeah. Um, so I mean, to the audience, uh, these people could be business owners or whoever. Um, could you give, give a backstory about yourself, who you are, how you built this business, and yeah, how you got started? Uh, yeah, sure. So I started in, um, <clears throat> I so grew up in Canada, Toronto, and um, uh, you know, as a kid, I was always uh, into trying like different businesses and trying to different uh, things. Um, I always knew like I didn't want to go down the, the traditional route, but my you know my, my dad he he was a uh, more like an academic. Mm. He had a he got his like PhD in Germany. In uh, chemistry, and you know, he's always like, "Oh, study, study, study." For me, like, I'd always be on the computer and um, trying to like play video games or trying to uh, learn how to code or something. Yeah. And um, that actually the point where he would like uh, try to take away my mouse and like <laughs> my keyboard so I couldn't <laughs> play before he came back. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I was, so you know, I, this was back in um, maybe like 2000, 2008 or so, where when SEO was kind of a, um, a, like kind of a, you know at the at the peak of it. When more like back then it was more like um, SEO was kind of new still. Like Google really only came out in the in the late '90s, yep. and then the internet the infrastructure really got built in the early 2000s, like Facebook and uh, you know Google and these things. So um, yeah, so one of my first businesses, I you know I try to get into SEO and um, mm. try to make my own kind of like websites and affiliate websites. And um, basically back then I tried to um, uh, rank, uh, make websites, rank them, and then you know collect the AdSense or Amazon affiliate money. And uh, I ended up building like 100 websites. They called the micro niche websites back then. And, you built um, 100, 100 individual websites. Yeah, 100 individual websites. Okay. <laughs> but they were like very, very micro niche. Like yeah. it would be, you know, um, I don't know, like best, uh, best sofa, something dot com. Yeah, yeah. Like like exact match domains and uh, very micro. And um, I was looking for like a rank tracker back then. And um, I was, you know, I was looking at the options. And I'm like, oh shit! Like back then, I was um, I was in high school. I didn't have any money. Completely broke. Yeah, and I was like, okay, I don't want to pay fifty dollars a month. <laughs> so I started googling like, you know, how to how to code, and eventually I just uh, scrapped together like this little in-house tool for myself. Yeah, and um, I was tracking my websites, but uh, my websites never end up ranking. <laughs> <at all. laughs> okay. So, but I found out other people wanted uh, to pay for the rank tracker, so yeah. I ended up releasing it, and that became uh, back then called Surfbook, and um, eventually rebranded to Keyword.com, mm. and um, yeah, so I ended up doing that, and. Um, uh, this was so I, that was like a grade grade twelve in high school. Holy uh, shit! Grade twelve is what? Sixteen years old. Seventeen, seventeen, eighteen, eighteen, okay. seventeen, eighteen, and um, that was when I first started coding it. And then by the time I launched it and um, got some traction, I was already in mm. university yep. back in twenty twelve. And um, basically, Facebook era. Absolutely, yeah. Facebook era. Yeah, it was okay. still yeah, yeah. So that back well back then, SEO was still very easy to like kind of manipulate and like do right. Yeah. But now it's like very very difficult. But back then, SEO was kind of like taking off, and it was kind of like. It's kind of like getting hard, and Facebook era is kind of turning up. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so I ended, up, I ended up even after high school, I ended up going to school for a year in University of Toronto, and then I ended Drop up out. dropping out. Yeah. Okay. So, so I dropped out year two. Uh, after year one, yeah, I was like, yeah. I was like failing. I was, uh, I was crazy. My, my GPA was like a like one point six or something or something. You're doing what? Computer science. Well, okay, so I went to computer science, <laughs> okay. but then. Um, so I, I really liked computer science, but then they made me take all these other courses like math proofs. Well, that was mm. okay, like math, okay. But then I'd take like uh, earth science and like sociology and all this. But then I get to class and uh, for like math proofs and there's like all these symbols. I'm like, holy shit, what is this? Yeah, what is yeah. this? Like, I don't understand any of this. And uh, you know, I go to my guidance counselor. I'm like, hey, listen, like I really like um, computer science, but I don't want to do all this um, calculus like, and like bullshit. all this random stuff. Yeah, right? yeah, I yeah. mean, it's, it's, it helps with computer science, but it's not mm. like I could do it if I want to, but I'd, I'd have to go and spend so much time. And uh, you know, like the teachers go, oh, you know, you can't, you can't get a degree then, and um, and then um, you know, so she's, she's like, oh, well, you're gonna have to change uh, majors. And she asked me, you know, what else did I like? And I told her I liked sociology, I like criminology. And she's like, oh, why don't you become a uh, criminal sociologist? You know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I was like, I was really pissed. I went back home and uh, I told my dad, I'm like, hey, you know, this is like, this, this, these people are crazy. Like the system is like so messed up. I already have my software business going. I'll get my degree in uh, computer science, but I don't want to do like criminal sociologists. And my dad's like, you know, oh, what's wrong with that? Like, it's a great degree. I think in Asian culture, they want like any degree, right? It shows, um, shows that you're good. Yeah. But uh, yeah, after, after, I mean, after the first year, um, like I think my business took off and it was making to the point where even if I did graduate and I did get a job in computer science, yep. um, I was already making multiple times that. So uh, there's no point. So yeah, end up dropping that 
uh, just dropping out and just continuing the business. Okay. And uh, yeah, 10 years later, I ended up selling it. Okay. <laughs> Which was uh, 2012 last year. <laughs> okay, let, let's take it back a bit, right? Sure. Um, were you born in Canada? I was born in Germany. Okay, when your dad was doing PhD? Yeah, then I we moved to Canada when I was uh, when I was three. Okay, can you speak yeah. German? No, I don't. I okay. Can't, yeah. Okay. So why why did he move to Canada after <clears throat> he finished? Why yeah. did why didn't he stay in the EU? Oh, why did he stay? Um, well, he told me that there was a it's very diff very difficult to get like citizenship in Germany, and um, mm -hmm. um, and also back then China was. Uh, very, it's well, it was still developing. So I think I think China had this program in the '80s where they, yeah. they selected like some of the smartest people in the universities, and they got to go and um, like get educated, um, mm -hmm. you know, get the PhDs and uh, kind of come back and teach the stuff to China. But then um, back then, um, I think my parents just saw there was a you know more opportunity in Canada than than going back to China. Like in the '90s, China wasn't it hasn't started the bull market yet mm. in China back then, so it was still very um, you know. Also, your dad was one of the scholars who managed to get out technically. Oh yeah, yeah, right, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. Was that? Do you know about that stuff or? No, sorry. Okay. First time. <laughs> first time hearing about. Yeah, it. I'm, I'm not too familiar with it either, but um, yeah. So my dad was one of the first batches I, mm. I left, and uh, they. Um, I think back then maybe China was. If you're working in China, you're making like ten dollars a day, and they're giving him a full scholarship, like a thousand euros a month or something, you know. Yeah, yeah. So it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It totally <laughs> makes sense. Yeah, so that's kind of the story. Okay, yeah. so. Uh, moved to Canada when six, uh, three, three. Yeah. Then did high school, did university there, yeah. etc. Um, what made you? Because you said uh, you always knew that you weren't going the traditional route, right? Yeah. What? To, to me, I feel like people are always. Um, you get inputs from from somewhere, right? You're hearing or like listening to something uh, different from the traditional path. Like, how did you get or realize that hey, this is not for me? Oh yeah. Well, I just started. Well, in high school, I remember. Um, like I remember, I started thinking, and, and, and I was like, this, "This makes no sense. Like, why, why would I spend, um, like, every year? Why would I spend like, th like, let's say, tw let's say, thirty grand a year plus living? Maybe mm -hmm. like, 30, like, let's call it like thirty to fifty k a year yeah. for four years. That's like two hundred k." Then I was like looking at business for sale, and I was like, "For two hundred k, you can get a business making sixty k a year. Why don't? I, why wouldn't someone just buy a business for sixty k? Or you know, if, if they're going to spend the money for school anyways, mm -hmm. you can just buy a business, run that for four years. By the yeah. end of the four years, they'll have a few hundred more thousand. They can buy a second business now. They're already making 120. Yeah. When you know, when 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 if you come out of school, you're only making like 40, 50 k a year. Yeah. And I was like, I would have these. Uh, well, I would have these thoughts, and then I would go tell my friends about it, and then they would be like, No, no, that's stupid, or that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> and uh, okay. I was just, you know, I was just thinking more and more. And, and yeah. yeah. It didn't, and the more people like couldn't give me valid points, the more I thought about it more, and um, kind of just I uh, kind of just uh, went through like that. And I think now nowadays when I think about it even more, it's um, you know. I think about like you know why they were even thinking that way. It was just because you know like for example my um, even in this play so this play the Peter Pan that we saw yeah, yeah. Um, in the play he says hey like oh in the beginning he's like oh you don't have to get a job if I don't get a job then I won't have money then the kids will be in the family uh, on the streets I mean the kids and the family will be in the streets yeah so it's like this programming right like when I was a kid my dad was like oh you know if I don't get a job I've, I'm gonna be oh no or he let's say I'm five years old a six year old I'm like where are you going he's like, my dad would be like hey. I gotta go work. I have to work because I need to get money, mm. right? So then his friends are the same, and then their kids. So like it's like him, everyone yeah. around him. They're all following this path, and then that means the school I went to also, which is like public school in Canada, they are all like very similar to my social economic uh, class, right? So yep, yep. if that's like their path following, there's no other route, right? Like now when I'm when I've met other friends, like I met a friend, um, you know, let's say uh, you know he went to like private all boys boarding school. You know, like private school, also in Canada. Mm. But he, like, he tells me, you know, he talk, they, they talk about like uh, option costs. <laughs> he's like, when he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Or like, yeah, yeah. you know, their friend, the, the, you know, the, their friends is like uh, does business. Like everyone's like a high-paid uh, professional or business person. So mm. I think it's, um, I think like just, you know, I think I think in the West you do get a fair shot. That's what I would say. Like you get educated, mm. you learn English, you get a fair shot. But you, you're kind of like, um, you're kind of like a uh, bred into Mm. You know, yeah, working, linear paths. Yeah, basically. it's like very linear. Like yeah, very, yeah, yeah. You, you know, you follow this path. And even in school, like they, they have the options. Like, hey, do you want to do? Um, in in Canada, they have something called like applied and academic. So academic is like you're doing maths and sciences, and applied is more your hands-on stuff, like yeah. woodworking stuff. Yeah. So even then, it's like you go to school, and they they tell you, you have like an option. Like, hey, like, do you want to do uh, academic stuff or do you want to do like applied stuff? And you think mm. you have an option, but both paths really just converge back into uh, yeah. you know working like a nine-to-five kind of job. Yeah. So. I don't know. 
when you, when I started thinking about it more and more, and this was like this was like ten years ago, like before all this like red pill, uh, all yeah, the stuff, yeah. you know, yeah, like yeah, yeah. like nowadays you got yeah. all this, uh, uh, you are like this, uh, you know, woke woke stuff on the side and then red pill. But back then, no, this was like nobody talked about politics, nothing like this. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's how I kind of uh, thought about it. Exactly. Yeah. So th that's why I'm curious to say is like uh, in high school, <clears throat> YouTube, well, like is a nascent period, right? Like uh, it's always with TV. Like where yeah. are you getting this information about? Uh, if, if I uh, make a business <laughs> that does 60k, you know what I mean? Like you won't really think about that. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. a good question. Yeah. I think YouTube did exist. There were like, but but there weren't. Um, there wasn't that type of content. Yeah. It was yeah. like very very niche. It was very very niche back then. Mm. Now it's more mainstream. Um, yeah, now it's very more mainstream. Uh, back then, I think I think there were videos, but I remember this one. It was called like the the college scam or something. Mm -hmm. This was like a, a video from 2012. It was it was with animations, right? And uh, you know, they went to, like you know what the fiat dollar was and they, like the, yeah. that kind of thing, right? Um, how they print the money, like it was, but it was, it was very very niche back then, and um, nobody would uh, show their face. It was more like with uh, infographics or like not infographics, yep. but uh, cartoons. Yeah, yep. yeah. So nobody, it was it was stuff like that. And then I would I would like watch it and think. And um, you know, I go to school and I would ask people like, "Hey, like, hey, like, uh, you know, I'm. I th this is kind of weird, but you know, I'm okay if I, it's pro this thing is proven wrong. But let's let's dig into it more. And um, I don't know. I, it's maybe, maybe they don't want to know the answer, but they get angry. <laughs> people get angry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They get angry yeah. very fast. And um, yeah, I mean, but now now it's like people are kind of waking up. It's like everything everything just lags behind like t around a decade. I think like back then. Um, well, also, also back then, like, you know, the internet kind of got invented, well, like, you know, it kind of boomed in the two, 2010s, mm -hmm. right? Like, yeah. like, if you told someone in, in the 2010s, hey, you can make money, it's like, how? It's like, online? It's like, not heard of. It's like, it's, known, it's thought of, like, scammy and all this stuff. But nowadays, it's like, oh, you know, like, um, go make up money online. Like, you know, if people are waking up kind yeah. of more. Yeah. You know, Sorry, so. you didn't really answer the question. <laughs> and then the question was, how, how did you find out about that? Like, yeah, through YouTube. Through YouTube. YouTube, yeah, those okay. uh, cartoons, yeah. Okay. So you started building websites. I'm guessing because you understood the affiliate game, right? Is that yeah? Okay. Well, uh, well, the concept was simple. It's just uh, you know you build some websites, try to rank them, and you get the traffic, and uh, yes, yeah, get some revenue from there. Okay. And were you like on WordPress, custom code? Like, how were you building those? Um, sites? I think it was WordPress. Yeah, it must have been WordPress. Um, just this was a while ago, but it was, uh, it was probably just some shared hosting with some yeah, yeah, yeah. WordPress things. You know. probably SiteGround or something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think it's Hostgator. Okay. Back then, yeah. <laughs> oh, gee. <laughs> okay, so how do you transition from the website building? You're like, okay, I need to learn how to code, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, uh, which languages do you start with? I mean, there, there's, there's no, like, um, uh, front-end frameworks last time, right? Everything is, like, PHP yeah. and stuff. So how yeah. did you get started? Yeah, back then it was, uh, yeah, the infrastructure was, yeah, no, no, there's, like, no programming languages, frameworks. There's no, not even, like, like Stripe was only getting started back then. Yeah. Like, no yeah. one even heard of it. Yeah, um, yeah it, was, it was quite challenging. I mean, um, I think I just uh, I started with, well I started with PHP mm. and uh, there was no framework like in the code it was just like a lump like a well, it wasn't lump but it was like a spaghetti code <laughs> <laughs> it is paste as long as it works like just who cares like, right yeah just yeah. like try to get it working and then you know obviously try to clean up later on um, it was only until the later versions we like uh, we did the whole uh, we rewrote the whole code with uh, frameworks like uh, yeah. Vue.js and Laravel and stuff like that yeah but in the beginning versions it was um, yeah it was very rough just um, something doesn't work Google it try to like Stop it figure in. it out. Yeah, figure it out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. How, um, so started building Subbook, basically. Yeah. Um, trying to solve your own problem, am I correct? Yeah, my own problem, yeah. Okay. So I was my first customer. Okay. Yeah. So how, how did you, um, obviously launched it, bootstrap everything, UI probably sucks or whatever, but just launch, right? Um, how did you get your first customers? Well, the first, well, the first customer, um, there was a forum back then called the Black Hat World, which is very popular. It's still popular. It's still popular. It's still, yeah. yeah, but I think I think um, it's, the forums are still good. Yeah, but I think more communities like Reddit and Twitter have kind of uh, mm. popped up now, or, or even soaked up the distribution basically. Yeah, but yeah. back then, I mean, I think the peak of these forums were uh, in the 2010s. Mm. But I, I think I posted a thread saying, "Hey, like I'm working on this, um, you know, web rank tracker thing. Like, you know, who's interested?" And I was getting like pages of pages. Of uh, you know people putting their hands, yeah. And um, so I'm like, okay. So I you know I coded it. Well, it was already coded for internal use. So I just you know I made it like a login, sign up, and uh, added like a payment processing. Mm. And um, then I launched. I gave some trials out, um, and some people signed up, gave me feedback. It read a few for a few more months, and then eventually uh, released it for uh, you know public. People, uh, I made it like a launch for people to sign up publicly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so I started. You basically the 
best form of MVP product launch, which is what popularized today, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I think um, yeah back then, but I think the key thing back then was I validated the demand first mm. um, before I before I launched it. Because I think if I went like even if I it's like the right place, right time. Because if I went today and I did the same thing, yeah. uh, there's so many rank trackers out there. Uh, you know, might be difficult for people to show interest now. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So 2012 <coughs> launched. Is that correct? Yeah, 2012. Yeah. Okay. Launch got you few customers, beta customers. I'm guessing you improved the product along the way. Um, how did you? You met if you had 50 customers and stuff, right? Uh, those have referrals, word of mouth. Um, how did you improve the product over the years? Because, like you said, you only sold it like 10 years later. So, like, what were you doing, like, in between those years? Yeah, so I would, um, I would, I would take uh, customer feedback and uh, just, iter you know, figure out what the pain points are and yep. then iterate it. Um, I think um, a lot of customers they, they like to suggest features, uh, but you know, it's um, there's like a rule where it's not their job to suggest features, and it's not your job to suggest pain. It's like you have to figure out their pain point, yep. and then you have to figure out which features they need. So yep. it's actually like a inverse of what they would uh, ask for. So, mm. so and you were the customer as well. So you actually knew the pain. Yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think it's it's easier also if you if you're your first customer. But if not, like I think I've seen a lot of products where uh, they just start adding random features, and it ends up being like this um, Frankenstein product. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or like you know I've seen a lot of um, other SaaS. Yeah, they they have the one thing, and then they start adding little things and. No one even uses them, but then they have to end up maintaining all these things. Yep. Um, so kind of iterate that way. I ended up um, improving the UI, the UX. Um, also in the back end, um, like we were scraping on this, uh, we're gathering all this data and stuff in house. So it was uh, mm. very challenging back then to mm. you know keep everything um, operationally going as well. Okay. Yeah. Gathering all the data means all the search queries that people are yeah, using, inputting, to process everything. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So how how did you scale the product uh, from the 2012? So going from you know. Like ten users to like a thousand users, the the back end of the DevOps must be insane as well. Because back end the, back then AWS was like <laughs> yeah, non existent, right? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So Well yeah, these are good points. I I'm not even I don't even think about this stuff. Um yeah, I mean I didn't have any I, I didn't really have any employees until uh, two thousand or I didn't have anyone working with me, so yeah. I was doing all the coding, all the DevOps. And the marketing, marketing and the uh, customer service. Yeah, I was doing okay. everything. Okay. Until around twenty probably twenty seventeen, eighteen ish. Seventeen, eighteen. Yeah, so five, six years. <laughs> it's solo, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Fine. So I hit, I hit a, yeah, I hit Millier with just myself. <laughs> <laughs> it is good. It's good. Bootstrap profitable. It's basically all the good metrics. Yeah. 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 So, so, when when did you start realizing, hey man, I, I just need someone to help me here? Well, I was I was like working sixteen hours a day and. Um, Five I, years in, you're working sixteen hours a day. Yeah. Still. Why? Because I was uh, I was doing everything myself, right? Like yeah. let's say servers were crashing, then like shut them up, the DevOps, and the, then adding new features and bugs, customer support. Yeah. I was just like go go go. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Treadmill. And yeah. uh, also like I I didn't have any like you know I didn't know anyone who was like into business or ha I didn't have any mentors. Uh, it was very difficult. Mm. Um, so you know I'd ask my mom, hey, <laughs> I'd be like, hey. I'd be like, hey, like what the hell do I do? Yeah. yeah. My mom'd be like, no, like uh, don't hire anyone. They're gonna steal your steal your business. You know, like, the Chinese, mom, <laughs> Chinese mindset. So, wait, wait, what, 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 was your mom working or oh, housewife? Or? Yeah, she was just like a housewife, right? So, okay, okay. Man. So she didn't know anything about business either. Yeah, so, yeah, but that's yeah. the only thing I would ask. <laughs> and then, you know, eventually I ended up being like a business coach and he's like, he's like freaking out. He's like, what the hell? You got all the way here and you're still learning everything? He's like, yeah, no, yeah. no. First thing, I'm going to get you um, some custom support stuff. And I was like, oh. And I didn't know anything. So I, you know, it was like a, it was a brutal, like two, three year, like uh, kind of on ramp. So I ended up hiring, uh, building up the team. Yeah. And everything during those couple of years later on. Okay. So you got to a uh, mill uh, total total revenue by yourself, and then you started hiring. Yeah. Then it's yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How long did it take for you to like, um, because like business coach stuff like that, right? For you to like really remove yourself from the business such that you could just do whatever you want. Oh, it took um, it took a good four year, three four years, I think. Okay, from twenty seventeen, basically twenty twenty. Uh, yeah, like twenty, let's say twenty eighteen until twenty 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 one. Yeah. Yeah, something like this. Yeah. Okay. Uh. I mean, some of the competitors in this space, like Ahrefs, Semrush, they mm. all... Semrush, I think, is public, right, as well? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, like, these guys, you know, they're coming after your throats as well at the same time. Like, what were you thinking and were you even trying to compete with these people? Yeah, it was... Well, um, well, the first few years, I had, like, very high parabolic growth. Mm. And later on, I think it really slowed down a few years in because uh, that, that's around the year when Semrush and Ahrefs, they started releasing these uh, free... Like, they just bundled the my whole product into their, their, yeah. their suite, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, shit, like... And then people can't sing like, oh, and that's mine, like, oh, this, well, you know, um, this thing's giving me for free. And um, 
it was quite it was quite frightening at the time because I uh, you know I, I wasn't sure where, what was going to happen, um, and then I saw my competitors as well. A lot of other uh, core rank trackers they were also they started to like try to compete against uh, those big big tools. Like they started trying adding they started to try bloat basically it's just bloat. Yeah, they tried they started yeah. to add to like um, like a like a you know site crawlers and like these things. Mm. And uh, but for me my strategy was I'm gonna just hunker down and and defend. Rank tracking, so I, 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 you know, I was, I was looking at, um, I guess, Yamash and, and Ahrefs, and I was saying, okay, well, the other rank tracker, um, what would somebody who's a more dedicated SEO person like need for rank tracking? Mm. And I try to just double down and focus just on rank tracking. Yeah, yeah. Was looking back in hindsight, was that the correct decision? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think so because um, I think SaaS is like a, it's more like a winner takes all thing, right? Mm -hmm. It's like a. You're basically buying. Um, you're basically selling a refrigerator. It either works or it doesn't work. Like in other niches, like info or mm. ecom. Um, like if you're doing info, I'm doing info. We each get a piece of the pie. But yep. in SaaS, it's winner takes all. There's no such thing as um, you like divide it up e evenly. Okay. So it's basically the best rank tracker will win. And of course, you can niche down like yeah. the best high end rank tracker, best low end, yeah. uh, best rank tracker for agencies, best rank tracker for enterprise. But the best of each category will win. There's no such mm. thing like oh you have to you each get a piece. I think that's the key difference between um, like playing a SaaS versus uh, mm. other spaces. But personally, like I do SEO as well. Right? I I do marketing. So like um, I wouldn't want to buy a personalized rank tracker, tracker, and then buy like a keyword search volume something else. You know what I mean? I don't want to separate tools. I don't want to pay for separate subscriptions. Okay. So yeah. am I seeing it wrong or I don't know? Uh, so you mean if you have SEM Rush, you wouldn't uh, want to buy a dedicated one? Like I'm a customer. I'm a potential lead or whatever. Right? I don't want to be paying for separate subscriptions. Yeah. I don't want to just have one rank tracker software and then one for search volume. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. you mean if you, you already have SEMrush, you're less likely to buy a dedicated one? Yeah, or, because like SEMrush probably has everything already. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's yeah you might yeah. So in this case, you might have just turned and went with the free one. Yeah. But maybe for um, like an agency. Um, mm -hmm. Also, so what we did was we we focused like more on a SEO agencies, mm. and they had needs that uh, SEMrush weren't able to fill like okay. like a sub okay. accounts or dedicated reporting or. Different um, shareability of projects, okay, um, stuff like that. But yeah, you, you are right that um, when SEMrush and these tools included yeah. uh, for your use case, you, you you probably would have turned based on what you told me. Okay. Yeah. So basically, what you're saying is that the USP or the stickiness for your product is more to do. Uh, you sell to the enterprise, you sell to the agency people. Agency people need to prove the value to the customer. To hey, we're actually increasing your your ranks. Yeah. Um, whereas. And Ahrefs or SEMrush is probably more like like me, like um, someone who uses just the product just for the product, not yeah. necessarily. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. More like an in-house team or like a mm. um, affiliate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, got it. Um, okay, so ten years in, yeah, uh, you decided to sell the business. Um, why? <laughs> why? Well, um, well, I see. Like, well, I started this, this project like ten years back, and um, sorry, this is twenty twenty, right? This is twenty twenty two. Two. When I sold it. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it was still uh, it was still fun. Well, you know, trying to work on this thing, but you know, my heart wasn't really in it anymore because mm. um, it's been over ten years. Like I was good at what I was doing, but yeah, um, you know, I want to move on to different things and other more exciting things that you know have uh, maybe higher higher personal interest in and. Um, and um, yeah, I just wanted to change it, change it up. And um, also, from from my personal skills, um, I tried everything I could. Yep. And I, I I couldn't uh, like I, I knew what I, I okay I knew what it would cost to get to the next level, and I wasn't willing to pay it. And um, so to me, somebody else I thought it was better. If I I sold the business, and somebody took yep. their skills and they took it to the next level. Okay, well, what do you mean? Uh the next level meaning like two three x revenue. That, that sort of thing. Yeah, let's, yeah. Let's say a two three x revenue. Yeah. Okay. Or ten x. Okay. Yeah. And what what is the price? <laughs> you said you didn't want to pay the price, right? Well, it's like um, well, the price is like you know you you gotta really uh, um, like the team, the hiring, uh, you know. Build out the product team. Build out the like, like back yeah, end. like like you maybe you have to go cash flow neutral, right? Maybe you have to hire like a. Um, like a heavy duty CTO, like yeah, three, four hundred k a year. Mm. Well, like if you really want to take a shot at SEM Rush or at these things, like you know, instead of just um, trending, you maybe you got to hire a CTO, like three hundred, like let's say two hundred, three hundred k a year. Yeah. You got to hire um, a couple of developers, a uh, product, and really got to start um, like rank tracking. I think uh, we we did a lot of the things we could already in the rank tracking space. Maybe you have to we have to take a sh kind of like not pivot, but like kind of uh, turn the product to more painful needs because mm -hmm. rank tracking it's. Um, 
it's more like selling a vitamin versus a, like the pain a pill. Pain killer. Mm -hmm. um, like there were there were tools uh, in the last couple of years where like they actually help you write the article that gets you the traffic, right? So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know I'd have to go get the CTO like dedicated SEO. Oh, with the Gen AI stuff coming as well. Or stuff like this, yeah. It's okay. like you know those okay. are all like those explosive growths, right? Mm. So rank tracking, it's um it's kind of like an older niche. It's maybe it's gonna be there for a while, but you know it's not gonna see that explosive explosive like 10x. Let's call it. Yep. Um, so yeah, maybe I'd run it cash for neutral for like three to five years and then take a shot. But uh, yeah, it wasn't really going to pay that price and um, decided to change and got it, else, got so, it. Yeah. Basically extreme capital investment. <laughs> need to go to neutral, need to go to, go to break even basically and try to just... Yeah, like, yeah, like moonshot, moonshot it. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, got it. Uh, I know because you said the first five years or so, you didn't really talk to anybody, right? It's more like a solo entrepreneur thing. Yeah. When did you start uh, opening up talking to, uh, not only the software guys, right, just entrepreneurs in general and expanding your network of? Um, yeah, so I started, uh, <clears throat> well, it was very hard for me to connect with people who were just like normal people. I didn't really have that many friends. I just had um, maybe like my childhood friend. Mm. And um, and um, so, so I was getting, you know, I wanted to like kind of expand and connect with more people, like with like-minded people. Yep. So I ended up joining uh, some communities like EO, like Entrepreneurs Organization. So, mm. And then I started meeting other people and I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. Um, so I started to talk to more people and, uh, you know, get more ideas and stuff like that. EO is based in multiple cities, right? You can, yeah. Okay. We have chapters in all around the world, so. Okay. So you joined the Panama one? In Canada, Toronto. One. Canada, Toronto. And then I left that and joined the Panama one later on. Okay. Okay. I also know you, you talked with uh, Jason Lemkin, the SaaS guys as well, right? I mean, if you talk to other SaaS people, you generally get ideas, right? So what, what made you, like, despite talking to all those people, getting new information from these people, like, uh, you're like, okay, it's just, I don't want to do this. Well, uh, SaaS, there was an inflection point, I think, where it was getting, um, like, like, I think there was like two phases of SaaS. Like, like okay, when I first started in 2000, in the early 2010s, um, that was more like, the, like there was no such thing as, it wasn't called SaaS, it was just called like web apps. Yeah, right? yeah. And there's no such thing as SaaS, there's no SaaS community, there's no SaaS, SaaS thing. So it was more like bootstrappers who had like, who were, who were almost building out like the basic um, SaaS of the internet, like, like, you know, website uptime monitoring, um, basic, basic stuff. And then later on, there was some, there was some inflection point where uh, VC money started to, to enter the space, mm -hmm. right? So um, this is probably like 2000, uh, 17, 18, and then really accelerated the, the COVID. The institutional VC guys. Yeah, they started fucking, oh, sorry, I shouldn't say. It's okay, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay, don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> I'm not, not monetize this channel anyway, it's fine. It started freaking, you know, <laughs> just. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, they started coming into this um, space and they started yeah. dumping millions and millions of dollars. So, so, mm. so, so like after COVID, um, SaaS really exploded and they started to um, like, started to back all these founders, okay? So, um, okay, I know there's an argument of uh, what should you bootstrap or VC, which one should you do? But at the end of the day, um, uh, it, it um, like if, if, if I'm, let's say you're a VC, I'm, I'm bootstrap, right? Yep. It doesn't, it's good for the customer because like, okay, let's say you get $10 million in your bank account, but you give all, all, you give up all your equity. Like you have maybe 10% equity left, right? But you, they won't dilute that much. Right, they? they won't, they won't, but let's say yeah. you like multiple rounds, right? Yeah, you're yeah. like series D or something and yeah, you dilute yeah. everything and I'm still bootstrap. It's like, or let's say you raise 100 mil, you have 10% equity left. At the end day, you have 100 mil in the bank and I have, no, I don't have, I have all my equity, but I don't have the capital. Mm. So you, you, you can, like on average, you can hire better people, you can hire a better team, pay them more, and you can ship better products. Yeah. And I can't, right? So even though uh, I might have more upside personally as a yep. bootstrapper, yep. Uh, just because I have more equity, you, still ha you can still have an advantage over me and you still crush me business-wise, right? So, um, so as, I, as I was talking to all these SaaS people, like, it wasn't really helping because, you know, like when I went to these conferences, they were all talking about, hey, like, did you raise your round? Did you, did you like, mm -hmm. are you on seed? Are you on Acer? Yeah, I'm yeah. like, oh no, I'm bootstrap. And like, I, I wasn't really able to connect with those people. And the bootstrappers, um, they don't go to the events. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, yeah, like yeah. the ones I went to, like Saster and um, uh, a couple other ones, I, I, like I went to this one, uh, yeah, they're, they're mostly like, yeah, they're like, it's very much geared towards investors meeting. Um, mm -hmm. Dating for entrepreneurs, basically. Yeah. To connect them with capital allocators. Yeah, so, so yeah. it was getting hard to bootstrap, yeah. So even like SC Marsh, they, they raised so much money and, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so I mean, Ahrefs, I know they're like bootstrap, but the mm. founder he put in like like half a mil or something to get started, right? So, um, I mean, yeah, you, it's like a his own kind of like seed money in yep. a way. Yep. Um, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I get it. Yeah. I get it. 
uh, but I'm sure people approach you, right? Uh, about raising? Yes. Yeah, and I mean, in the early days, the the they, they saw the traction I, they wanted. Yeah, to get they, in. I wasn't. I didn't really. I wasn't really interested. Yeah, I was just kind of doing my own thing, and um, and uh, you know, I thought it was it was nice to have uh, make my decisions how I wanted to, have my own pace. Um, yeah. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I get it. I also see the kind of world. And it's like everything's inflated. Why give up so much equity just for? Just to say I raised, right? That doesn't yeah. make sense. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. the thing is also, technically, uh, most of them are not uh, profitable on the economics as well. But you're already profitable, so you actually don't need that money, right? So Yeah, that's right. Yeah, a lot of them Yeah, a lot of them are raising and yeah, kind of digging into that cash. Yeah, um, yeah. I think most people also don't understand how capital intensive. Like you said, a CTO costs 400, 500K, right? A good one. Right, yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, people don't understand how capital intensive a SaaS business is. Would you, would you redo a SaaS if you, if you would? How how I run a SaaS is um, you can't really run it for cash flow. I think it's like a losing game because cash is, okay. uh, because SaaS is deflationary. Like it's it's going to trend towards zero, right? Because mm -hmm. there's no cost to service. Yeah, because everyone's going to compete once they see. Yeah, so like the cost of servicing like ten and hundred is not ten x. It's maybe I don't know twenty percent more. Yep. Right. And then when comparisons come, it deflation deflates to zero. Yep. Um, so if you cash flow, it's a losing game because you're going to end up losing the business over the next five years. Mm -hmm. And. Um, um, and also the problem with SaaS also you have to rebuild the whole product every three three year, three years let's say right three or five years the whole product. Well, if you don't catch up, if you don't start adding features. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, it's going to eventually um, you eventually yeah, stagnate versus stagnate. Yeah, and then comparison yeah, yeah. will, will uh, uh, go ahead of you, yep. and you'll just end up losing market share to everyone. Um, like if you if you just go back to the Wayback Machine and you look at uh, SaaS from like five years ago, it's unrecognizable. Like the mm. UI has to update, and those are very expensive and time consuming. And yeah, because you need a front end guy, the Figma guy, <laughs> designer. Yeah. yeah, you need like a yeah Figma design, then you need like front end, then project manager, then QA, and yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like a whole thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's basically like 500k in payroll it's just there. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I mean, I, I know the, the people, you know. People say, "Oh no, like you know, I don't need a CTO. I can I can get away with um, offshoring that. Yeah. Uh, paying I pay my guy 60k a year. But okay, yeah, sure. But on average, like if you hire 500k versus 60k, it's on average. Yeah. Who you, who's say, gonna win, right? Yeah, like yeah, the, yeah. The, you know, on average. Yeah. So um, yeah. Okay. So, I get it. I get it. So yeah, if I would do it, would I do again? I, I would, but if I would have to uh, be able to get number one or number two spot in a big market and mm. and, and uh, keep it there. Okay. Yeah. And would you raise? Raise um, depends on the niche. If mm -hmm. I can get it without raising, then I think I think it's good. I think I think maybe a sweet spot if you can get to like five mil AR yep. strap and hold number one with like a lean team, maybe like you know twenty guys. That's that's a really good spot. Mm. In cash flow a um, couple, couple mil a year, and just uh, sure. that would be a good spot. Yeah. Okay. Got but I, I don't know about the whole raising thing, like raising all this money and explosive growth. Yeah, and, I also disagree with that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You want to talk about the acquisition? I mean, don't have to disclose anything uh, personal about the firm or whatever. Um, I guess, how, how did you get the inbound offer? Or like, were you trying to sell? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, that one. Um, so, so I, when, I, when I decided to uh, sell a business, I, I reached out to a couple of these um, like private equity uh, yep. companies. Oh, so you're going outbound? Yeah, I did outbound, yeah. Okay. Um, I think I saw it on uh, this channel, Dealer Bust, from Nathan Laka. Mm. So he had a couple of people there, so I, I, I reached out to them directly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I, the, the Shark Tank show, right? <laughs> yeah, I watched that as well, okay, okay. So this guy, um, Tim from SAS Group, he was one of the uh, contestants mm. there. Yep, so yep. <laughs> I reached out to him and, uh, or not him, like on, the, on his contact form, just basically like contact form and mm -hmm. reached out to a few and um, they, they reached out. Um, and uh, I was also, I uh, went, I also worked with a broker and asked them their opinion on what, what they could sell for. Yeah. And um, ultimately, uh, you know, SaaS Group, they made an offer. It was a, you know, all clean, clean terms, quick closing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was, I was, I, ultimately, it was either to go with the uh, SaaS Group or to go through the, the brokerage. But the brokerage, the, the price was very similar and then the fee was kind of high as well. Yeah. And um, there was also a risk that I wouldn't get the asking price that they would, they were, uh, they were you know, want. saying. Yeah. So like, I was thinking, okay, you know, if I, the asking price a little bit less, plus the fees, I'll, I'll get even less. Yep. And um, so yeah, so I did the exit with the with SaaS Group. Okay. So clean exit. I'm guessing all cash and no need for you to continuously be there as well, right? Yeah. So they they asked me um, what I was looking for. Yeah. Um, so you know they would say, hey, you know, just be honest. You know, if you want to get out in in a few months, or if you want to stay, you know, if you want to stay on board and run it, you can. Yep. So I told them, hey, you know, yeah, I'd be happy to help you transition, but ultimately want a clean break. Um, mm -hmm. So. They uh, gave some cash up front, like, um, 
80, 90, I think around 80, 80 or 90 percent. And no, 90 percent upfront, and then 10 yep. percent holdback after uh, after about six months. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, clean break. So now you feel <laughs> all the weight of your shoulders, basically, right? You basically don't have to give a shit anymore. Um, um, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. It, it was. It's. I think it comes with other other problems or not problems like other experiences. I would say, oh. like uh, it was like you know once you exit, people are like, oh congrats, congrats. What do you work at next? I'm like, oh, no, <laughs> like I'm not, yeah. just not sure. Right? Yeah, yeah. And then like then like you know like kind of like then also like you know because I, I this is all I did my basically my whole life I was doing like from yeah. from you know it's your baby basically yeah like eighteen to eighteen years old to twenty eight I was doing this and um, so now it's like. It's kind of like your identity, right? Like you don't, you're like, oh, feel like, what do you do? You're like, oh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, sorry, just a random question. The keyword.com is a very, very uh, powerful domain name. Yeah. How much do you buy? <laughs> How much did you pay for it? Um, I don't know if the uh, SAS group would like. To oh, okay, okay. It, but okay. yeah, it was a. <laughs> if you can't disclose, it's fine. I'm just curious. Yeah, but uh, I mean. Yeah, it was a yeah six figures yeah okay. for the for the cause I, I got a keyword.com keyword.net dot org keywords dot net, net oh, and keywords dot org <laughs> <laughs> and you you bought it when you're transitioning from certain book basically right yeah I bought it I ended up buying it yeah so I I, I bought it in uh, I think 2000 I can't remember which I, I can't remember which year I bought it but mm. yeah I bought it a couple of years before I sold it and then I rebranded okay. and I sold it but I think I think that was a mistake because um I think the P's were. Uh, finance buyers, so they, they looked at the revenue multiples. Mm -hmm. um, they looked at the revenue multiples, and so they, I don't think they value the domain as much. So if I could, why go, not? It's a better domain than Subbook, right? It's better, but it doesn't help with the cash flow. Like it's not a cash-producing asset. Like maybe they, maybe you know, maybe they, you know, I, I think I could have got more money for it if I sold separately. Subbook separately and then domain separately. Okay. So, um, but it, it was too late for me to uh, like untangle it now. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, very curious, but like amazing domain name, basically. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, we come, we come to the end of the interview. Um, so, I mean, post, post exit life and stuff, uh, a lot of people become angels, right? Become investors, become whatever. Yeah. They, they don't want to build another business and try to make it successful. <laughs> they just want to allocate capital and maybe raise from some fund, give me 200 mil, or just whatever. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on that? And I mean, what 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 do you enjoy doing now? Basically, like what what brings you joy? Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I don't think I'm not really into like angel investing that stuff. Like I don't know how to do it, and um, it's like it's, it's considered like high like high risk and illiquid, right? That kind of investment. High angel. risk, illiquid. I would think it's liquid. If, well, if if you own a company, you technically can sell it as well, right? Well, if you invest, let's say you have a company, I invest in you. Yeah. Like your seed, I invest maybe twenty five k. I the only way I can exit if I exit from a secondary, right? Yeah. If you, and that could that could be years or. Uh, or you, well, most of the time, like let's say nine out of ten, your business just goes bankrupt, and yep. then one out of ten times you on liquidity. I have to wait till one of the rounds, or if you like IPO or you get acquired. Mm. So like that's kind of uh, you know it could be locked up for five or ten years before I get any liquidity. Yeah. And so that, I mean that's how I came to the conclusion. It's like high risk, kind of liquid. Okay. But you don't have to invest in the seat. You can just go to an A or B. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but again, I have no experience with doing that. So I mean. Okay. Yeah. I don't really find it interesting either. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I came from the bootstrap world, right? I have no like, I'm not really into this like VC thing, and um, I'm sure there's smarter people who are into it. You know, they talk about like preference, preference, liquidity preference. Prefer shares. Uh, uh, yeah. There's preference shares, pre preferential shares. There's like a liquidity preference. Yep. It's like all these uh, terms and you know all these the things. finance stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. So. Super boring, and also doesn't really add value to the business, anyways. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So well, nowadays I'm working on just uh, kind of finding and building a home, like where I want to settle down for the next uh, yeah. five or ten years. Yeah. Yeah. Last question. Um. Uh. Maybe second last. Uh, sure. So I mean, wh what do you actually do during a day, <laughs> besides finding a home, <laughs> besides finding uh, tax requirements or whatever? Like. Uh, nowadays I'm I'm just uh, I'm reading a lot. Um, I'm on uh, YouTube a lot. I'm just. Learning, kind of learning, taking getting new ideas. Off. Yeah, new ideas. Mm -hmm. um, um, new frameworks of, uh, about the world, how, yep. how it works. Yep. Um, also, like uh, figure out like my relationship with money. Um, a good, really good book, like Psychology of Money, that mm -hmm. I read. Okay. Um, it's helping me understand like you know what's kind of happening and taking some time off. Like, I, I got, I did get really burned out from running that stuff because it was like you know 24/7 um, DevOps basically. Yeah. If anything crash or any fires, so. Yeah. Do you still code for fun? 
Um, not too much. Not too much. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because okay. there's all these like frameworks nowadays, and you really gotta mm. like be in it to yeah to uh, keep up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Do you have any advice for the audience? Um, I mean, these could be these people could be SaaS entrepreneurs, or they could be literally anything, just building a business. Do you have any advice for them specifically? Um, I think, yeah, I think maybe uh, <clears throat> just uh, be careful of like the hubris. You know, hubris like um, too cocky. It, yeah, too cocky. Like there's, there's yeah. Uh, well, like, when I had some success with Surfbook, I started like to try different other small other other businesses. I'm like, oh, you know, I'm so smart. <laughs> Surfbook works. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm gonna yeah, buy yeah, this yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. Like I'll, I'll buy this thing. It's gonna blow up. Uh, and, and grow, but it, all that happened was I end up wasting all this time, and um, it's like, uh, or like for example, like later on you start, uh, you start, you start thinking like, oh, like I don't need to talk to customers. I'm just going to build this thing. For sure, this is going to work. Or for sure, this then this is the, the next big thing that blows up. But you know, you end up like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're just stuck in your head. Thinking yeah. Like, so like, yeah. just stick to what works. Talk to the customer, and validate, and uh, just keep building that way. And I think I also um, maybe focus on one thing. Like if. Um, because I, when my, when my, uh, when the, when the, when the, uh, when, when the, when the business wasn't exploding anymore, I started yeah. like buying other small SaaS things. Yep. And uh, all that did was I just ended up like dispersing all this energy, right? Like mm -hmm. instead of doing one, Foc instead of focusing on the customer, you just distracted yourself basically. Well, I mean, not the customer, but the main business. Mm -hmm. Like instead of going all in on one business, I started doing like uh, other smaller businesses on the side. Yep. And it's like. Um, what I should have done there was I should have just uh, tried, went all in, and if I couldn't do it, I should have sold the business and then did a second all in instead of doing like one big one and then trying to do acquisitions to grow the ultimate portfolio. Mm. Yeah. Okay. That's great advice. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, would you like to, how do people find you? Uh, if you don't want people to find you, it's fine. Don't promote anything. <laughs> but uh, I guess how do people find you? Um, yeah, can, can you? Uh, let us know if they want to connect with you, if they want to talk to you, how do they network with you or something? Um, not really too active on social media, but uh, got Instagram, said uh, Kevin Zhou. Okay, so I'll put the me. link down below. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything okay. else? That's it. Thanks okay. for having me. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs>